Sports. Presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. It is a warm, sunny day at Kauffman Stadium. The Royals can use that for inspiration as they're trying to get a win as they wrap up a disappointing homestand against Cleveland and Texas. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the ballpark with Rex Hudler. I'm Ryan Lefevre, and in just a moment, Joel Goldberg will be joining us. And I wonder, Hud, if Yesterday was the type of day that can turn things around. You had uh, a very stern conversation in the middle of the game between two teammates. At the end of the game, the final out, helmets, bats flying, arguments between players and managers, between umpires. That's the kind of game that results in more focus, doesn't it? You sure hope it does. I mean, the Royals, they want that too because they've got to find a way to get back on the winning page offensively. But, you know, sometimes in games, you know, they got to work things out. they got to just, just everybody get along, please. <laughs> Both teams are expecting a lot from their starting pitchers today. The Royals have lost 9 of 11, so they need Jeremy Guthrie to step up. The Rangers have won 15 of their last 19, and they want Colby Lewis to continue that. Let's focus on Guthrie. He really bounced back nicely his last time out after getting banged around by the Yankees in New York. Yes, and you know what? They win behind Guthrie. He's 20 and 15 here in his career at the K. Pitches the defense, tips his cap. But executes his pitches down in the zone. That's one key to winning, is you got to use the deep. But still, it's the fastball that's been working for him. Hey, 92 to 94, that's going to get it done. Try to stay out of the middle, keep the ball in the yard. He should be all right. Well, there is a lot of pressure in being a big league player, but there is no pressure like peer pressure. And Joel will take us back to a moment from yesterday's game when we come back. That get up. I mean, we got a photographer named Pope, Jonathan Pope. This will be the Royal Pope catching the home run ball of Salvador Perez. Maybe that will get them a little bit of good luck going. Joel Goldberg back here in left field. You just heard Ryan and Rex talking a little bit about some of that fire and some of the stuff going on right now with the team and the struggles and the frustration. We saw it yesterday on the field and maybe a good teaching moment, a good leadership moment for these young Royals. Okay, here's the moment. Eric Cosmer didn't really like, it certainly looked like the body language of Jordano Ventura on the field. And you see a stern talking to from Eric Cosmer. And then when it wraps up, you could see the words from Eric Cosmer, let's go. And that is just good brotherly love from Eric Hosmer. And talking to Ned Yost about that today, yes, Hosmer's only 25, but he said no surprise. He has been a leader from almost the beginning when he came here. Those of us that are around the team every day, not surprised by that at all. Some leadership from Hosmer. Ned Yost also pointed out guys like Chris Young, Edison Volquez, Alcides Escobar, Alex Gordon, and Salvador Perez as others who are leaders on this team. Jeremy Guthrie, another one of those leaders, and they need the veteran to deliver today, coming off of a good start against Cleveland, ready to pitch on a warm afternoon. First pitch is next.
bright moment. Salvador Perez went deep. That's a good sign. And then look at the guy that caught it. How about that get up? I mean, we got a photographer named Pope, Jonathan Pope. This will be the Royal Pope catching the home run ball of Salvador Perez. Maybe that will get them a little bit of good luck going. Joel Goldberg back here in left field. You just heard Ryan and Rex talking a little bit about some of that fire and some of the stuff going on right now with the team and the struggles and the frustration. We saw it yesterday on the field and maybe a good teaching moment, a good leadership moment for these young Royals. Okay, here's the moment. Eric Cosmer didn't really like, it certainly looked like the body language of Jordano Ventura on the field. And you see a stern talking to from Eric Cosmer. And then when it wraps up, you could see the words from Eric Cosmer, let's go. And that is just good brotherly love from Eric Cosmer. And talking to Ned Yost about that today, yes, Hosmer's only 25, but he said no surprise. He has been a leader from almost the beginning when he came here. Those of us that are around the team every day, not surprised by that at all. Some leadership from Hosmer. Ned Yost also pointed out guys like Chris Young, Edison Volquez, Alcides Escobar, Alex Gordon, and Salvador Perez as others who are leaders on this team. Jeremy Guthrie, another one of those leaders, and they need the veteran to deliver today, coming off of a good start against Cleveland, ready to pitch on a warm afternoon. First pitch is next. Royals baseball is brought to you by AT&T, U-verse, high-speed internet. The U-verse revolves around you. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT. By your Kansas City area Chevy dealers for great prices on all the new 2015 vehicles. Stop by your local dealer today. And by the Missouri Lottery, every ticket you play gives back to schools across Missouri. So play it forward with the Missouri Lottery. Another huge crowd here today as the Texas Rangers go for a three game sweep. They have not done that here since 2008. There's their first year manager Jeff Bannister and the Rangers really caught fire after they last faced the Royals but over a little longer stretch our Toyota League leaders 
shows us that Texas has the best record in the major leagues since May the 4th. And it's easy to say, well, who are they playing? Well, the Rangers are the best in baseball against teams above 500. They are 13 and 6. Yeah, you know, this is a uh, offense that really believes in itself. Prince Fielder is 100% Prince. He's having a fantastic comeback season. Andrus is another veteran, a shortstop. You know, they're, they're just well balanced in their they attack. They're very feisty offensively. Jeremy Guthrie starts today, and Kia will put us in the driver's seat. He is four and three this year, and one of those wins was against the Texas Rangers. And trying to slow down their offense today. One thing to point out from that start against Texas, he went five innings and did not allow an extra base hit. Ooh, man, if he can repeat that, that would be a beautiful thing, especially here at the K where the wind's blowing out. Guthrie's got to keep the ball in the yard. He's given up 10 home runs this year. Nine to left handed bats. And that defense out there, Gerard Dyson, is getting to chance to play some center. Lorenzo Kane's going to take a chill pill for nine, but we could see him in there later. But you know this is a an offense or excuse me a defense that's that's the best in baseball as far as saving runs for pitchers and Guthrie they, he knows that he's going to try to pitch to contact although down in the lower quadrant of the strike zone. There's Lorenzo Kane and Ned Yost had mentioned a couple of days ago after the Friday night game that Rios would get yesterday off and Kane would get today off so that was pre planned and an opportunity to get some work for Dyson. Down and away to Delino De Shields. Somehow, some way, try to keep the Rangers off the board first. They've been scoring early and then they haven't been giving it up. And in this series, they got a run in the first inning on Friday, and then yesterday they got two in the first and two in the second. Keep them off. If you can. Jeremy Guthrie once he gets past the first inning you normally get his best. So he's allowed 37 runs this year and 12 of those in the first inning that balls well hit but right to Dyson who comes up for the first out. Guthrie's going to use that fastball and I think he's figured out that that 92 to 94 is plenty good enough to get everything going here. Oh man that that's not a. That's not a bug. That, little, mm -hmm. that bird there thought that was a big, big moth, but man, that's something that could hurt him. Glad he got out of the way. Fastball that he's using, but the changeup, he'll cut the fastball, curveball, those are all his pitches. Establish that number one first, and that's the fastball. There it is. 92, good two seamer with some movement. Change up. One ball, one strike. You know, we've talked a lot about Guthrie using his fastball more. And when you look at all of his pitches, that's his best pitch. The opponent's batting average is just 265. He's a well prepared pitcher. He knows. Sal to the screen, and it hit the wire on top of the screen. The wind might push that in a little bit, but it's close to the grandstands like that. The wind's not going to have an effect, but it will affect that baseball when it gets to the outfield. It's got a pretty stiff wind today. Salvi got rid of his mask way back there, so he didn't trip over. Good fastball inside, two and two on Shin Su Chu. Still two and two. We began the show today talking about Guthrie's bounce back effort on Tuesday against the Indians. Remember, he got knocked around by the Yankees at Yankee Stadium. And according to the numbers we just showed you, that his toughest inning was the first. He threw 27 pitches in the first inning to four batters. 
two up, two down so far here for Guthrie. You know, that Cleveland Indians lineup was stacked with left-handed hitters. And he was able to dispose of them with the pitches like this. A little off speed. And, you know, it's it's all about the, the changing of speeds uh, that really tricks the batter. It's, uh, you know, how much miles per hour in between the fastball, the change up, and the curve that really throws the timing off. Keeping those guys off in front of this guy is really important. Fielder using the whole field. Although the Royals have him played to pull on the right side of the infield. One and one on Fielder, who has a rather long and successful history with Guthrie. 24 at bats, a 500 average. Two balls, one strike. You know, you look at this big fella and you're thinking, wow, he, this guy is really out of shape. No, he's not. This is this is who he is. He's his father was a big league ball player and, and was a big guy himself. I was watching Fielder before the game as he fouls that one off. Out right on the field here, doing exercises with the medicine ball, throwing them over his head, working out. He's a he's a very good athlete. Don't let the size fool you. And to add to that, HUD, when he went down with neck surgery last year, he had played in 547 consecutive games, which was the longest mark in the big leagues. He had never been on the disabled list before last year. Yeah, he he's really has a high pain tolerance. He can play hurt. Close and get the feeling that Fielder wasn't 100% sure. Jim Reynolds decided that that pitch was down and in. So Guthrie to the stretch, and now he'll face Mitch Moreland. Batting cleanup he is our T Mobile game changer for today. Moreland hit a home run to the opposite field on Friday against Volquez. He has hit 429 against the Royals this year. He had just come back from the disabled list when the Royals were in Texas a couple of trips ago. Coming off of a, an elbow procedure. Removing some bone chips from his elbow. So he started the season healthy. Had the surgery and now back from the DL. He is a game changer. Power to all fields. Be careful with this guy. Anything up, he's going to be taking a shot at it. Fastball at 93. Now he's had trouble with Guthrie. There's two out of 14. Down and in, two balls and one strike. Moreland has been a good player for the Rangers over the years, but he's never really had a big breakout season. And this year's injury was not his first. He's had difficulty at times staying off of the disabled list. His career high for home runs is 23, which is respectable in his ballpark, however, in the summer months. You would expect a bigger number from a power left hand bat, and he's never driven in more than 60 runs, which is low for a middle of the order guy, very low. Still two and two. 2013, 23 homers, you know, but you're right, Rhino. That ballpark he's playing in, as much power as this guy's got, he should have a 25 and 30 home run season if he can just stay healthy. Giving Guthrie a bad time, it's still two and two. Guthrie's using 
more pitches than he wanted to so far in this first inning 22 they're, they're taxing him a little. Got him to pop it up. Tough sun field for Alex. You can see the sun reflecting off of his glasses, but he's able to pick it out, and Guthrie has a scoreless top of the first. for second all time in Royals history and the Royals despite their recent slide they've lost nine of 11 they're just one game back of Minnesota in the central and that's who the Royals will face to begin a three game series beginning tomorrow night. Here is the State Farm Royals batting order for today second straight game for Gerard Dyson. The Royals will try and ride that hot hand Dyson had a three hit game yesterday filling in for Rios. Who's back in there today? I thought Ned might scramble the lineup. Maybe just kind of put some guys in some different spots just to kind of shake it up. Sometimes managers will do that, but he's staying with the guys. And overall, through this losing uh, spell they're in, Ned's done a great job of managing his team, keeping them positive and confident. And, you know, that's what a, a, a field general's job is. Colby Lewis, 35 year old Colby Lewis. We have two veterans on the mound today. Guthrie 36, Lewis 35. He is a strike thrower and he is a fast worker. Center field and down for a base hit. So Escobar able to wipe the slate clean after a disappointing at bat to end the game yesterday. This is the game that they've got to be able to tell themselves hey look we're going to start putting our, our offense together and score our starting pitching some runs for Guthrie. They've been a little airtight lately look at no errors. Or excuse me seven errors in the last three games. Ooh man not good. I'm going to check my bifocals and read that. <laughs> properly that's that's not well you only missed want. by seven yeah hey but look uh, they're going to try to do all they can to try to help Lewis Lewis a veteran guy you said he throws strikes he's got a good fastball but not overpowering his average fastball is 88 to, to 9, 89 slider curve and a change up this is the kind of pitcher that if he's out over the plate our guys are simply good enough to put the ball in play and find the holes that's what they got to do Base hit right field. Escobar goes first to third. And that makes Mike Moustakis a 500 hitter against Colby Lewis. And they're runners at the corners with nobody out. Hit them where they ain't. That's exactly what you want to do. Moose taking advantage of the first baseman, Moreland, holding on Escobar. Got him something he liked out over the plate and pulled it. Yeah, played him straight up. No more dead pull for Moose. 
He'll, he's got more hits to left field than right, but that'll work. Hosmer now has got to do the job, batting in that third hole. Look for something up and elevate and get it up. Heck, that wind's blowing out today. Tear high and let her fly. That'll get the first run home. Martine makes the play. Hosmer drives in his 34th, and that has to feel good. It's one run, but it's a lead early in the game. Early aggressive swinging we're seeing. And when you've got this situation here, that's a ball you can't miss. That's a curveball. First pitch, Escobar was waiting to score. You know, it's really a fine line, Hood, because this is what the Royals do. You know, they say, okay, you know, getting their first good pitch to hit. They're being aggressive early in the count. Well, that's what they've been doing during this recent slide. But getting good pitches to hit, as opposed to just swinging at anything near the strike zone. And their one win on this homestand was against Corey Kluber on Tuesday, and that was the game. Remember, Escobar doubled on the first pitch, Mustakis singled on the second pitch, and the Royals right away had a 1 0 lead. And now they scored their first run today on just four pitches. Some of those other pitchers, though, that they were facing besides Kluber, they were effectively wild. And it got the Royals swinging out of the zone, like you're talking about. They, they weren't their pitches. So they're putting swings on him, but they, the pitcher was doing his job and he was getting the hitters out. That's that, how simple the game really can be. Don't forget to look forward to Miller time later in today's game brought to you by Miller Light. Big swing by Morales and Lewis got it in on his hands. So Moreland brings it down for the second out. And now Alex Gordon. Alex. Looking for a big day today to help set up the road trip. Just one for 14 on this homestand. Lewis is in with strike one. It is K State Day today. And there are some of those hats we've been telling you all about. The Purple and silver K State themed Royals hats. Those were courtesy of Fox Sports Kansas City and Rally House. 0 oh 2. Yeah, welcome the folks from Manhattan here on a nice day. Good day for OW. Okay, a lot of numbers here. Last 11 games, 23 runs, so just over two runs per game. Batting under 200. On base percentage down, slugging percentage down, and as you would imagine, all of those, or most of those, if not all of them, at the bottom of the league. You know, when, when the team's going good, they're going really good. They're at the top in every one of those categories. And when they've been going bad, which is their first losing spell this year, they're bad. Hot and cold. That's a good shot to left field. Just kind of trying to flick that bat out there. It's another way of coming out of your slump a little bit. Sometimes is seeing the ball travel to deeper towards the catcher's glove and take a shot to the opposite field. You're seeing the ball longer. Ouch. And that hit Alex. That's the tenth time he's been hit this year. That is the most in the American League, and it prolongs the inning to Alex Rios. Doesn't even flinch. Can't hurt him there. He's got tree trunks for legs. Strong, conditioned. Check the ball for a dent. So Gordon and Moustakis among the league leaders and hit batters. The Royals have been hit the third most times in the major leagues. 
So whatever it takes for base runners now to keep the inning going now Alex Rios. Good pitch over the outside 0 1 coming in there first pitch strikes Kobe Lewis hitters can be ready. Rios three for 13 with one homer in his career. One and one. So Alex should have fresh legs today after getting yesterday afternoon off. He also came out of the game on Friday early for a little head start on yesterday's day off for him. Two balls, one strike. Another big crowd here today. Sellouts for Friday and yesterday afternoon, and it's like another sellout here today. He tried to stop, but wasn't able to. Manny Gonzalez is the first base umpire. Two and two. Well, it's the umpire's interpretation. Did he make an offer to swing at the pitch? Hard to check your swing. Fouled off of Chirinos. Right off the right shoulder or collarbone. Mustakis is at second, Gordon's at first. Eric Hosmer has driven in the run in this inning with a sacrifice fly. Ooh, that pitch stayed up. Rios was looking for something else. And he strikes out. But the Royals take the lead. Aggressive with Colby Lewis early in the inning. Slugger and Willie Wildcat enjoying the Royals' early 1 0 lead. St. Louis and Milwaukee and if you'd like to be a part of that well maybe not quite that although who knows maybe the fans can create that in a non playoff situation we have a watch party coming up on Saturday as the Royals will be in St. Louis it's at the power and light district presented by 610 sports radio the party begins at 2 p.m. at the KC live stage with special appearances from slugger K crew. 
and 610 sports personalities along with prizes food and drink specials admission is free and parking is just two bucks and who should Royals fans be looking for from 610 if they go to the watch party Danny Parkins and Carrington those are the two characters that will be there yeah. amongst some others should be so a lot of fun give you a chance to redeem yourself yeah no look we're we're really tight can't you tell yeah the butcher the guy's name I'm so sorry Danny well and they are promoting on their radio show to come out and meet Tex Fuddler <laughs> although you'll be in St. Louis with us well yeah I'm planning on it sure hope to Joey Gallo Elvis Andrews and Leonis Martin in the second inning three balls and two strikes on Gallo young man sure has a big uppercut swing it's a little bit long game one of the series he struck out four times and two more yesterday and now he takes a leadoff walk that's Guthrie's second walk. Guthrie immediately turns around wants to get the attention of the shortstop or second baseman whoever he wants to work with on a comebacker. That's right a ball hit back to him he's got to know who's covering so it kind of helps with that potential double play on a comebacker. He's working with Escobar. One hop to Moustakis out at second. Quick turn, double play. Five, four, three. <laughs> Just what the doctor ordered. You'll take it. Especially on the day game, it's a specialty. Roll them over, little ham and eggs. That's it. Easy routine ball. Third induced double play by Jeremy Guthrie this season. Look at how Infante clears himself of the sliding runner. When the third baseman catches it, usually you'll go to the third baseman to help yourself get cleared. Go get that ball. Nice turn. Leone's Martin with two down, nobody on. No balls, two strikes. Good fastball at 92 from Guthrie. The numbers show that lately Guthrie has had a little more velocity on his fastball. That one at 91. So he's been anywhere from 91 to 93 with that pitch. And thanks to the double play, Guthrie faces only three in this inning, even with a leadoff walk. Little blue by you.
Ford for great deals on new Ford cars and trucks. Visit thoroughbredford.com. It's no Royals without my family. Talk to me. Come on, give me some love, please. I beg you, we need a win. There you go. <laughs> I love that guy. Head away, Floyd. That guy is special. He's got life. He loves being at the ballpark. Salvador Perez homered in the ninth inning yesterday. His seventh of the year. He's got. Oh my. Didn't quite get it. Had the right swing, the right pitch, but just in off his hands this time around. Here's the one yesterday, got a pitch up. And I think it's a good sign when the Pope is on the receiving end of one of your home run balls. Oh, you better believe it. Way to take care of the Pope, sir. Nice catch. Good soft hands, and you had to reach over. He's showing some skills. Omar Infante with one down. Tough pop for Andrews. And Infante is safe. That'll be a base hit for Infante. Omar out in front off the end of the bat. Andrews had a hard time with it. He's able to come around with it the second time, but by then, Infante was a little close to the bag and he beat it. Let's see here. Ooh, yeah, just barely. Didn't even have to replay that one. Good call. So he's on with one out for Dyson, who had a three hit game yesterday. And Lewis throws a strike. This guy's been unbelievable. First pitch strike. Six out of nine hitters now. First pitch. Now it doesn't, it's not always a fastball. He's been mixing them up, throwing some curveballs in there, too. That's good to keep the hitters off. And nice to see Gerard Dyson have a big game yesterday. You know, his style of play could really help the Royals get back on track. We did our weekly interview on the radio side with Dayton Moore today, and Dayton was positive as he normally is. Not that concerned about what's going on now. He said he'd be more concerned if this were the middle or late September. But talked a lot about the Royals just kind of getting back to who they are, getting back to their identity. Forcing some action. There's Dyson thinking about laying down a bunt, running some bases, taking an extra base. And, you know, the Royals were just doing everything right in the first month and a half of the season. They were hitting for power. They were hitting with two outs and runners in scoring position, getting a lot of extra base hits that they really didn't need to be that speed team. Forcing the action with their speed, and there's Dyson's fourth hit of the series. He's going for two. Yeah. Second and third with one out. Dyson got to second before Infante got to third. <laughs> there you go, Rhino. That's small ball mentality. You're right. Gerard, Gerard Dyson, he brings that speed element. He's hot. Everything he's hitting now is falling, and I'll tell you, he smelt that right away on contact. Any, any ball to the fielders left or right, any of the fielders with his type of speed, when he's going out of the box, that's a double. Yeah, you're right. He got, he got in there before Infante got to third. One out, second and third. Another opportunity for the Royals to get another run here. Maybe more. And the Rangers will play with the corners in the middle of the infield back. Down and away to Escobar. This is where you really want to zone him up here. Make sure he gets that ball up and then don't miss it. Infielders 
from Bannister's Rangers are playing back the middle guys. Give them a little bit more range on any ball that could be hitting towards the outfield on the ground. Escobar taking a shot toward right field. Get that ball up and sack fly's been working so far today. That's what got their first run. Escobar had a nice, easy swing and a single to center field first time up and scored the Royals run. And now he drills it to left field. Back goes to Shields to make the play. That'll get Infante to the plate. Now the Royals with a sacrifice fly in each of the first two innings and a 2 nothing lead. That's how you take advantage of an error. And make it that really hurt. We talked about it before the game. Rangers, if there's one part of their game that's got to improve, it's that defense. Remember, the Royals are leading the charge with the All-Star voting. Five in the starting lineup if the voting ended today, including Mike Moustakis, who bats now. In addition, Eric Hosmer, Kendrys Morales, and Omar Infante are in second place, so let's Stack the all-star game with Royals. Royals.com slash vote. I thought Mike Moustakis had a really good approach when he singled in the first inning. You know, he's been working the middle of the field, going the other way. We know that. And on Friday, apparently he spent an entire batting practice session going to left field. So they're going to try and pitch him in, which Lewis did, and Moustakis was ready for it, and he turned on it. And single to right. Remember, that's his bread and butter. I mean, he can he can turn and burn on on balls, and that's really unfortunately what got him into some trouble with his batting average. He kept trying to pull so many times, and he had that left field stroke in him, just didn't have the confidence in it. Bobbled, recovered, and out. But the Royals are getting their hits. They're moving the runners, and most importantly, getting them home. 2 nothing Casey. Ball, ball. In the field as he dazzled us once again with his defense and with his bare hand. He's our most trusted player, brought to you by the most trusted brand, Honda. Instincts, great footwork, hand eye coordination. Gotta have all those to play the middle, especially as good as Escobar. But I'll tell you what, that arm he's got is as good as there is. He's got the whole package total. 
And if the Dancing with the Stars were in the right season, Eski could go and had time in the offseason, he might win it as quick as his feet is and light on his feet. Get one of those, one, those young partners, teach him a couple of moves, I think he'd be a winner. Now, you know, some of the reality shows like American Idol and America's Got Talent and X Factor, there are European versions. There are foreign versions of the same show. Is there a, is there a Venezuelan Dancing with the Stars? There's got to be somewhere out there, right? Now, we'll find it. You can Google anything now. We're, as Denny calls it, gargling. We'll, yep. we'll just gargle. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Denny, do we get a, a Denny uh, sighting today? I think that's the plan. Wonderful. Two and two on Robinson Chirinos. He had a big hit for the Rangers on Friday with a two run single, which knocked Volquez out of the game. Strike three called. Guthrie has struck out one in each of the first three innings. He has not had more than three strikeouts in any start, but he is on his way to surpass that today. Chirinos don't want to, but he's got to go. Good location. Check it out. Low in the strike zone. That's exactly where Guthrie wants to stay. He keeps it there, and they do hit it. It'll be one of the brilliant defenders. Chance to field them and throw them out. Hanser Alberto. He had a three hit game yesterday. Guthrie, good location, good velocity, good life with his fastball. That one in 93. Alberto, mainly a shortstop. Playing a little bit of second base. Good hitter, like you mentioned. Maybe they're grooming him to be a utility type player. I don't know if he has the skills to go every day. Of course, he's still kind of young. But every ball in Friday's game and in, in this one here, every ball hit to him, I saw him bobble or juggle. And yesterday, apparently he made an error. I mean, you know, you cannot miss when you're an infielder in the big leagues. That's your main bread and butter if you're a second base shortstop. That's that's a must. You've got to be able to make all those routine plays. Once in a while, you make a fantastic play. That's good. But Sometimes fielding can be like hitting. If you're in a hitting slump. You don't have a lot of confidence. Defense the same way. You're, you're telling yourself when you're out there, don't hit it to me. And that's the last thing you want to be telling yourself. Good pitch up and in. Easy for Infante. I won't fall into the Harry Carey trap. <laughs> <laughs> Which we heard when we were in Chicago. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. Father's Day only two weeks away. Be sure to get your tickets for our Father's Day celebration at Kauffman Stadium. The Royals are home. Sunday June 21st the Boston Red Sox will be here and treat your dad to an afternoon at the ballpark. The first 10,000 men receive a special edition barbecue apron courtesy of Academy Sports and Outdoors. Tickets at Royals.com or calling 1-800-6-ROYALS. When we were at Wrigley Field last road trip we were playing some classic Harry Carey calls. And there was a pop up to Ray Sanchez who eventually played for the Royals played very well for the Royals. And a pop up easy pop up just like the one to Infante and Harry went out on a limb and it's bad karma as a broadcaster even if you're as great as Harry Carey. He's never dropped one of these in his life. And of course what happened as the ball was coming down. Yep. He dropped it. Uh, then he fumbled and mumbled. A yep. <laughs> yeah. What's <laughs> sure. Oh well. I do that a lot. Rangers are without a hit. First time through the order against Guthrie. Jeremy has walked to. The Shields open the game with a line out to center field. Found it off of his foot.
Good move by the Texas Rangers to get this guy in the Rule 5 draft. First round pick of the Astros. One year was their minor league player of the year, but they left him unprotected, and the Rangers took him. And now he's their leadoff man. Dyson started back, and now he sprints in, and his speed allows him to adjust on that play. And that's three hitless innings for Jeremy Guthrie. Location, location, location. numerous veterans of war and utilizing his passion for horses and he has also started the war horses for veterans which is a three-day equine and networking experience Hosmer grounds out to second base one down and through the program the war horses for veterans Veterans are able to bond with each other and with the horses, as well as provide the veterans a peaceful break from the everyday life challenges. Andy Brown in the Buck O'Neill legacy seat at today's game. Thank you, Andy. That therapy with the horses works. Are you speaking from experience? I am. Now, unfortunately, it didn't work for me, but it did my son, who has special needs. And it's amazing when you put them on a horse, what that does to their whole system it just calms them down and makes them feel comfortable feel good it's accepting it's a wonderful practice interesting it works well, they're, they're a wonderful animal not quite as wonderful as the triple crown winner though from yesterday mm -hmm. first time since what 78 One and two on Morales. He popped out to the first baseman Moreland in the first inning. Got him looking with a breaking ball. Second strikeout for Colby Lewis. Two down. Sometimes you see the ball up there. It looks like it's not going to be a good pitch, but then the downward angle to the curve worked. Came right up across the outside. Pulled foul. Alex was hit by a pitch for the league leading 10th time in the first inning. As Lewis got him. On the inside of his left leg, his back leg. Alex, early in his career, was hit quite a bit by pitches. 
13 his rookie season. And I remember he shared that when he was at Nebraska and Mike Anderson was the coach, the hitters were taught with two strikes to get up close to the plate. And he carried that into his professional career. First three up, three down, inning for Lewis. At the end of three, the Royals lead 2 0. It's an iconic Royals moment, and who will forget this? Mike Moustakis during the ALCS going into the third base dugout suite, and there it is, the Mike Moustakis over the rail catch bobblehead. The first 15,000 fans will receive that bobblehead on Saturday, June 20th. And it, it sounds sappy, but it was a bit symbolic as Mike continued to be a fan favorite even when he was struggling last year. He really fits the personality of this part of the country. He's hardworking, gets his uniform dirty. Whether he is playing well or not playing well, he's usually playing hard. He has a huge heart. And so even when he was batting 152 and on his way to Triple A, we'd still hear the moose calls when he would come to the plate or if he got a hit or made a play, the fans were behind him. So it's very symbolic that while they carried him throughout that season, they also held him up and carried him when he fell into the dugout suite and hoisted him back onto the field. And when the postseason was over, he had set a Royals record with five postseason home runs. Oh and two on Shin Su Chu. Guthrie struck him out in the first inning. Right now, what do they call that when when you dive into the crowd like you did when you went to your college there? What do they call that? And they, they, the fans pick you up and they, they move you. And they well, being a center fielder, if I was jumping into the crowd, I was probably out of position. <laughs> no, no, I meant I meant like in a basketball game. What, you told the story one time where you went to a game and they they took you and they threw you up in the stands. It's kind of like what Moose did. You know, they they picked him up and you know you see people crowd surf or whatever they call oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's kind of what they did mm -hmm. in that. In that third base suite there they they caught him. I mean if he if there had been nobody there he would have let it on his neck. Concrete. Exactly. Concrete and that's a long and fall. Steel seats down there. Yeah. yeah. That would have hurt Moose but I'm glad they made a bobblehead. 
Remember to vote for the Royals Player of the Month at RallyHouse.com, and you'll be entered to win a majestic prize pack from Rally House. That last pitch got some of Salvador Perez. 0 and 1 on fielder who hits it well toward right center field but Rios is there to make the play. By the way that strikeout of Shinsu Chu is Guthrie's fourth and he has become the ultimate contact pitcher. He can get a strikeout every now and then when he needs it but that is a season high four strikeouts for Guthrie. He has really changed his style of pitching. He was as a young pitcher with the Cleveland Indians 95 96 97 miles an hour. And a breaking ball in for a strike to Mitch Moreland. One and one. Hit well to the left field corner. Alex to the wall. It stays in and now rolls away from Alex. Moreland is not a great runner. So even with that bounce, he'll stop at second base with a two out double. Yeah, third base coach Tony Beasley was holding up both hands before he even got to second base. Don't try Gordon, he'll throw you out. That's a ball down the middle. At 93, he's going to get hit now. He caught it just right, went to the opposite field. First hit off of Guth Guthrie today. And the first time the Rangers have had a runner at second base, Joey Gallo. Fouls it down by his feet. Royals have struck him out six times in the series. They got him four times on Friday, two more times yesterday. And in his first plate appearance today, he was on with a walk. Good breaking ball. Gallo going for it all as he normally is, and the count is 0 and 2. In both 2013 and 2014, Gallo hit 40 or more home runs in the minor leagues. And that's a five month season. In 2013, he became the first teenager to hit 40 home runs in the minor leagues in over 50 years. It's amazing what these young guys can do when they specialize. Most of them all just play baseball their whole youth, their amateur career. Two balls, two strikes. But he's going to have an adjustment period here in the majors, that's for sure. When you get to the highest level, the, you're facing the world's greatest. These pitchers have been making a living here for a long time, and they really can move the ball, manipulate the strike zone, and could cause you fits. Changeup struck him out. Seven strikeouts for Gallo in this series. So the Moreland double is harmless, and we go to the bottom of the fourth. Guthrie with a season high five strikeouts, and the Royals lead 2 0.
Language wasn't great, only lasted three innings in the game, and we saw Eric Hosmer really talking to the youngster. Now, that's a 25-year-old Hosmer giving a bit of a talking to to the 23-year-old Jordano Ventura. Some leadership there. Ned Yost, not surprised. has been doing that for years. You know, a lot of stuff you guys don't see, but there's a lot of, uh, you know, um, being a good teammate, stuff that he does uh, with a lot of guys. Sometimes it's during the game. Sometimes it's a pat on the rear end. Sometimes, you know, he's come on, let's go. Um, but Haas has been doing it for years. Words, those words right there were really what the conversation ended with. We couldn't see it. I don't think Eric Hosmer wanted us to see the details. It was a private conversation, but it finished with him saying, let's go, encouraging. And Ned Yost guy says that, hey, we don't see all those things. Of course not. We're not behind closed doors, but we know Eric Hosmer, the person you see the talking to there yesterday. And HUD, you talk about it all the time, body language. It wasn't great for Jordano yesterday. We know about the talent. And he's young, but Eric Hosmer is one of those rare young guys that was born to be a leader. That's right, and we saw more emerging leaders last year step up. Lorenzo Cain, one of them. Alex Gordon's always been in there, but some of those things that we saw yesterday, that ball's hit well. And over to Shields. Alex Rios has a leadoff double. Go ahead, Hud. Most of those things that we witnessed uh, yesterday are always taken care of usually behind the scenes and in the clubhouse. A lot of that leadership goes on during the day when you have plenty of time around your teammates. There's a lot of talking, a lot of stuff going on as we see a perfect swing right here. And, you know, sometimes, though, it does spill over onto the playing field. And, you know, the emotions sometimes run high, but Hosmer was pretty firm. And, and, and you can tell by his body language that he didn't appreciate Venturas. And that is really a sign of, of immaturity on Ventura. And he's he's got, he's maturing a lot this season. So, you know, little by little, he's getting better. Even though it may not look like it on numbers. And if you follow this team, you know that they get along well. They spend a lot of time together away from the ballpark. They come in early every day. And there's just a lot of very unique camaraderie with this ball club. So you see something like that and it's easy to you know assume some red flags. Uh oh this isn't good but that actually is a good sign. I mean I have broadcasted for teams you've broadcasted for teams that if something like that were to happen the teammates would be like eh, well who cares let the coaches deal with it or the coaches will say let the manager deal with it or the manager will say you know what let the general manager deal with it and everyone just wants to push it off to somebody else but that is as much an act of being like a brother in a loving way than it is embarrassing a guy and trying to show him up you know by telling him off in the dugout right exactly you know I want to add something to guys and hug you could definitely talk to this I mean we all can but one of the guys that has been talking after every one of these losses to the media and really been standing up and encouraging and talking about the frustration and being accountable and not that everyone else isn't but you know not everyone needs to talk every night but Hosmer's been there in front of the cameras almost every game and Hunt, I wonder how far that goes with the teammates. Yeah, it goes a long way. You know, similar to a manager managers like to have young guys in their clubhouse and old guys step up and, and, and help them police the clubhouse and police the team. That's what that is. And he's positive and confident. And Hosmer, he's really wise in his words that he uses. He stays pretty basic, but he's he's a, a guy who understands the whole picture. And it's not about criticizing anyone because everyone has their own issues at times. And, and you know, there are times when Haas had to be led and had to be counseled. So you know, what goes around comes around, but Ned Yost has a clubhouse full of leaders in there. He didn't have to worry about much in there. Uh, you said he uses the right words and I agree with you. I mean he he says what is the truth and yet I think at times he also says what the fans are thinking too. You know some players today and I don't blame him because there's a, a lot of ways to get burned today. They will take the safe route. They will say the politically correct thing. They will say the positive thing, whether they feel like it or not. And 
Hosmer just comes across as very sincere. And yet he's not he's not lying. He is saying exactly what he feels. I really felt like he took that step forward and this is to both you and Joel Joel when he spoke with you after the game in Chicago following the incident with Ventura and Adam Eaton I really felt like that was a, that was a stepping forward for him not that he's any bigger leader than anybody else in the clubhouse but I really felt like he's become the royal spokesman since then that he's the go to guy when something happens either positive or negative he's able to articulate himself honestly and I think the fans appreciate that. I know the members of the media appreciate that, that it's not just the company line or whatever they've been coached to say, that it's he's not going to offend anybody, and yet it's exactly what everybody needs to hear. I think that what you get from Eric Hosmer, having interviewed him since he was a kid, we see the strike out there, is class, intelligence, accountability, and it's genuine. It's not just saying what needs to be said. And and you know, you, you've touched on that a little bit, Ryan. I, I, I was thinking as you were talking about all that to exactly the moment in Chicago where he was the one that came out and talked. And I don't know that there could have been a better player to talk to at that point that better represented the team and what this team was about. It happened to work out very well for everyone that he happened to have a good offensive game and it made sense to have him as our guest and the player of the game. But I'm not sure that anyone could have spoken more eloquently on that issue than Eric Cosmer did that night. Yeah. Now, you know, that just goes on along with what's hanging in Ned Yost's locker room in, in Ned's office. It's, it has a it's a big poster. It says Royals championship player and it talks about a lot of words with that start with C concentration comprehension clutch confidence composure commitment competitor coach character see you in the major leagues that's that's Dayton Moore's foundation but that's the championship type of Royals player that they're looking for a guy that can do all those things this all bleeds over guys too as young players start to get called up and now you want to build and 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 be able to maintain for years and years and years this is what happens and you know for so many years you had great guys and Ryan you could speak to this because you were around longer have been around longer than us but you had really good guys and Mike Sweeney and, and others but not everyone maybe was on the same page the talent wasn't all there but now as guys come up from the minor leagues as guys even get drafted as guys are watching from the minor leagues they see a well-oiled machine and they see the right way to go about things mm -hmm. one and two on Dyson snap bat in the sun and Alberto finds it so thank you for that Joel Royals get a leadoff double from Rios but he is stranded at second base it is still two nothing KC. Order online with rapid pickup at delivery.panerabread.com.
by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by Jeep. Come discover great deals during the Jeep Drive and Discover event. Sacrifice fly from Eric Hosmer in the first inning. And a sack fly from Alcides Escobar in the second inning. And Jeremy Guthrie has only given up one hit in his four innings. This was the uh, hot dog race. Oh, man. There must be some really good padding on the inside of those hot dog costumes. I'm glad we have all smiles. I mean, that looked like a violent yeah. face plant into the dirt. Ketchup and Rellis, they lost their bridges and went down. Elvis Andrews grounded into a double play in the second inning. Guthrie has walked two. He walked Gallo in front of Andrews before that 5 4 3 double play. And then the double by Moreland in the fourth. So Texas has had only three runners so far. Out to Infante. And one down in the fifth inning. All right, the players to watch. Brought to you by DraftKings.com. Go to DraftKings.com, enter the promo code BROYAL to play daily fantasy baseball for free. Is that guy Archer again? Got to keep your eye on him. He'd been striking guys out. 15 punch outs his last out. Mike Moustakis also on that list, and he's one for two today. One and one on Leonis Martin. One and two. Right to Alex Gordon in left field, and there are two down. Remember, you can follow live Royals baseball with MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or tablet. Stay connected to the Royals all season, wherever you are, with the MLB.tv game of the day, in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, and more. It's the number one app for live baseball. Chirinos back to Guthrie. Five, one hit, shutout innings for Guthrie. And it's the top of the order for the Royals. Third time through against Colby Lewis. And Alcides Escobar has already chipped in with a run scored and an RBI.
two nothing Royals as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning Ryan Lefevre with Rex Hudler now we'd all feel a lot better if the Royals had a six nothing lead right now and win today and yet the two runs they've scored are more along the lines of their style of play. Yeah, it's nice to see them use some small ball, get them on, get them over, sacrifice flies, getting them in. They'll take them anywhere they can get them. However, you just never know. The wind's blowing out here, and there's a knock for us. <laughs> Swinging bunt. So Escobar has singled twice, scored a run, driven in a run. And on to begin the fifth inning. Kobe Lewis, the last minute, that's a good breaking ball, good spot. At the last minute, he just said, forget it. I'm not even going to bend over and pick that one up. He's going to beat this out. <laughs> he just said, no, nah, I'm going to save my future back. I don't want any problems with my lower back. So he just backed off it. And sure enough, they're going to come out and check on him because he looked like he was favoring something. Well, maybe his future back, but his current right hip, he had surgery on that in the last two years you know that's that's the way he went down after this ball he didn't quite finish it Ooh, ouch! Yeah, something maybe grabbed him something, as he was bending over something bit him pain wise but says I'm all right to throw but I just you know, maybe don't like to feel and bend over and pick up balls so why not test him again moose to see if moose pushes down one that's what you do And Mike Moustakis has singled and grounded out to second base. Single was a ground ball, so twice Lewis has got him to hit the ball on the ground to the right side. Now pitching him away, ball one. Yeah, you know, forget the bunt. Moose, on a day like today, he can hit one out of this ballpark. Wind's blowing out a little bit, but you know, not a lot, not a heavy wind, but the ball is certainly carrying well here. Get a hold of one. A little back underside. See if you can get one wet. Now over the inside, one ball, one strike. That is low. Two balls, one strike. Royals with as many runs in the first two innings today as they scored in the first two games of the series. Sacrifice flies in the first and second innings today. That ball will be out of play. Moose being much more selective this this year as well as he's getting his heads to the opposite field but he's seeing more pitches seems like to me he's he's got a, a better eye even though he could stand to walk more he just has 10 walks now in 194 at bats coming into this game but he is seeing more pitches being a little bit more selective going deeper into counts. Lewis been mixing all of his pitches hasn't thrown just majority of fastballs but he's got his curve working his change up everything Escobar runs and it's hit into center field Escobar picked it up so Martin makes the play and there is one down tomorrow don't miss Team USA's first game as they battle Australia on Fox Sports one plus we have games all weekend long on Fox Fox Sports 1, Fox Sports 2, and it's all streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Down and into Hosmer, Chirinos. Bluffing a throw down to first base. That's a nice stop by Torino's. 
You know, he's not a very big guy, so when you're smaller, technically you can move quicker. Good backhand. Eric Hansmer is starting to warm up at the plate. One ball, one strike. He had a sack fly in the first inning. He had a two hit game yesterday. And hitting about 350 over his last four games. That was a swing. According to home plate umpire Jim Reynolds, Hosmer doesn't agree. Yeah, he made this call for himself. Looked to me like he held back. Martin, the center fielder, playing Hosmer to left center to the opposite field. Ooh. Right idea. This is game number 54 for the Royals, so that represents the one third mark of the season. And Alcides Escobar has four stolen bases. It's looking a little better, though. I mean, he's getting more aggressive leagues. You see Chirinos throwing behind him there, you know, so that he's drawn the throw. Ever since he hurt his knee early in the month of April, he hasn't been as aggressive on the bases. He had 31 stolen bases last year. His career high is 35. Right now he's on pace for 12. Two and two on Hosmer. Royals as a team are down quite a bit. Royals are ninth in the league in stolen bases after leading the major leagues last year. They still have the same weapons that can steal. They just haven't been going as much. Hosmer is down on strikes. That's the fourth strikeout for Lewis. Two down. They've been hitting doubles and scoring guys from first base so they didn't feel like they've had to run but they still have the, the ability to steal and I would see as the season goes on and they get back to their identity a little bit more they'll, they'll st we'll start seeing them run more remember all the home runs in April mm -hmm. we we're all pleasantly surprised and those home runs you know that that's a good way to take the pressure off the pitching to get some instant runs up there but that's not the only way and now they tapered off in the home run department. And when you're hitting home runs, the risk of running is not worth it. That's right. You're making an out on the bases, and Royals are knocking the ball out of the ballpark. Mm. Doubles, home runs. So they didn't need to use what got them through the regular season in the postseason last year. You're that done. is slicing away from Martine, and yeah. it's down. Yeah. And now kicked by Martine. Dropped by DeShields. The Royals lead 3 0 as Kendry's Morales drives in Alcides Escobar. There's the, uh, Kendry's Morales RBI. He could tell on contact it was hitting a good spot, but I thought Martin might catch it. But you can see the wind here at the cage just pushing that ball towards the left fielder. And that was a beautiful thing. As Escobar, he could trot all the way around from first to score. Third run of the game, seventh hit.
Now this feels like a difference maker right here. Uh, this to me in the first month month and a half of the season. This is where the Royals would add another run. And this inning began with a little squibber a little swinging bunt by Escobar and the Royals would take that break and turn it into something big. Here's another two out RBI for Morales. And early in the season Alex Gordon would come through right here and add another run. It is popped up. Andrews with the wind and the sun brings it down. So Morales is stranded at second base. Lewis limits the damage. And at the end of five, the Royals' lead is 3 0. Denny Matthews will join us in the top of the sixth inning. Hey, Mo! Nothing lead as we head to the top of the sixth inning, and we welcome in the voice of the Royals, Denny Matthews, who always joins us on Sundays. I'll say to you what I said to HUD an inning ago: it'd feel a lot better if the Royals were ahead six nothing. But I feel today like they are playing more within their identity than they have been the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I'm with you. And I thought when the game started, in fact, I said it. I think Colby Lewis would be the perfect pitcher for the Royals' offense to come out of their little mini slump. They've just always done well against him. I know he pitched well against the Royals in Arlington, but by and large, his history has been problems with the Royals. So I'm figuring, you know what? The Royals might come out of their little mini slump today. Well, three runs, seven hits. Not too bad, but pretty good start and great pitching so far from Guthrie. Yep. Guthrie's been everything that the Royals have needed from him so far. Number nine hitter Alberto Hanser Alberto fouls it away. Our Academy Sports and Outdoors leaderboard Guthrie's ERA was over six coming into today and yet he is allowed one hit in five innings a season high five strikeouts. Guthrie would you think that. He was the guy that would shut down their hot offense, scoring almost six runs a game. Or yesterday, you would think it had been Ventura. But you know, it's not. It's Guthrie today. Guthrie's just hitting his spots. He's staying, keeping the ball down, mixing them, having guys hit the ball right at him. Hanser Alberta. From a long line of Hansers, I assume. No, he is the first Hanser who has ever played in the major leagues. Wow. Mm -hmm. Did you look that up? No, Kurt Nelson told me. Okay. It's nice to have a historian on the staff, oh, isn't it? Tremendous. Line to right, and Rios is there. So some good fortune mixed in. That's the second time that DeShields has lined to the outfield. 
No two down in the sixth inning. Speaking of Kurt Nelson, the Royals director of the Hall of Fame, he passed this along. Neither HUD nor I were uh, members of the Royals broadcast team on June 7, 1988, when K-State graduate Ted Power pitched yeah, the shutout. That funky leg kick there, Denny. Mm-hmm. Interesting. He's a power pitcher. Hey. <laughs> That's a good name for a pitcher, by the yeah, way. That's a great name. <laughs> Much better than Bob Walk. Three up, three down. Three fly ball outs for Guthrie. Or Homer Bailey. <laughs> Bob Walk. in Boston earlier this week at Fenway Park. We've heard about it so many times, guys. You see the nets up behind home plate, but a woman by the name of Tanya Carpenter was sitting to the side of the nets near the visitor's dugout, got hit in the head by a bat. Initially, she was listed um, in life-threatening injuries. Now she is listed in serious condition, and this really is something I know we have all talked about for a very long time. Guys, an article from Ken Rosenthal of Fox Sports, our good friend today, came out with some really interesting tidbits to it. One was the fact that players tried to negotiate Nets being down the lines in a couple of the last negotiating um, periods with the with the owners of baseball and that was turned down by the owners. A couple of quotes Brad Ziegler of the Diamondbacks. Some owners are afraid to upset the fans that pay some of the highest ticket prices when in reality it's an effort to protect those very fans. And then C.J. Wilson Looks like that one will be caught in left field. C.J. Wilson saying it can happen at any time, at any point. You never know when it's going to happen, and so many people aren't paying attention. Guys, want to know your thoughts, because I know, Ryan, you've spoken on this for years, and I know many of us have feared that it would take something tragic until something happened, and hopefully, in this case, it's not tragic. Well, Denny, let's begin with you. Do you think it's more dangerous now? Is it the same? No, it's more dangerous for a couple of reasons. Number one, the bats. They've gone to the hard maple bats. They're much more brittle, and they're much more prone to splitting in half and the jagged edge flying into the seats. We've seen that enough. So I'll be out on a ground ball to short. And the other factor is the stands, the seats, are now closer to the field. Remember all the room in Oakland at the Coliseum is still that way. Here at Kauffman Stadium, the seats now are much closer to the field than they were in the past after the renovation. Dodger Stadium, there used to be acres and acres of ground in foul territory, and they pushed all the seats closer and closer to the action. Well, that's fine in theory, but when you get those bats cartwheeling into the seats on the jagged edge, wow, that's scary. We've seen it, and it's always frightening. Another thing is, most pitchers nowadays throw 95 to 97, 100 some of them. 
So the ball is coming off the bat a lot harder and faster and getting to the seats quicker than they did when they're throwing 88 to 90. It's the ball that scares me more than the bats. Really? I, I'm, I'm more afraid of the bat because mm. I think you can kind of defend yourself from the ball. Where's the bat? Where do you go? We'll continue that discussion when we come back. 3 nothing Royals. is brought to you by steel outdoor power equipment find a servicing steel dealer at steeldealers.com or search s-t-i-h-l by your midwest ford dealers visit your midwest ford dealers.com and by academy sports and outdoors right stuff low price every day prince fielder leads off the seventh inning as Guthrie delivers his 84th pitch for being our Sonic Slam player Jeff Jones from Kansas City Missouri will receive two tickets to a future Royals game and a ten dollar reloadable my Sonic card. Don't forget to drive into a participating greater KC or St. Joe Sonic drive in register for the Sonic Slam inning for your chance to win twenty five thousand dollars. To finish the thought on the discussion we had with Joel, I understand that the owners are apprehensive about, or some owners, I don't want to group them all together, about extending the netting. That fans who have some of the premium seats won't like that. There's Kelvin Herrera warming up. And yet the people in the crown seats here don't seem to complain about the net behind home plate. Or the people in the Diamond Club seats behind home plate, they don't seem to complain about the netting. Well, My fear has always been, like in the NHL, there's going to be an even more serious injury than the one in Boston, and then the netting will go up. And when they put the netting in the National Hockey League ranks, there was a little grumbling early, but. It died down pretty quickly, and now I don't think people even notice. Yeah, I found it interesting when Joel said that the, the Players Association were pushing for more netting, and at the same time, I don't, because players who leave tickets for friends and family every night, they want their family behind nets. They want their families as far away from home plate I remember watching games when we weren't televising on the roll on the road with Frank White and his eight gold gloves and he wanted to be nowhere near the field if there wasn't any netting. Because the best 
players in the world, the best fielders in the world, the ones with the quickest instincts in the world, they want nothing to do with seats close like that without a glove. So, oh, you see so much from the playing field. You follow the foul balls that go into the stands. And you see all of them. Uh, it can, it's been disturbing. Moreland is doubled and flied to left, and that double is the only hit against Guthrie. And now he has both of the hits against Guthrie. So he's on with one out. And so at the moment, Dave Island and Ned Yos are comfortable with Guthrie in there at 91 pitches, but if trouble arrives quickly, Herrera is ready to go. You think Gallo would rather see Herrera than Guthrie? Who's I do. Or KG? I think so. He's a, he likes the mm -hmm. fastball. He mm -hmm. wants he wants that cheese. Yep. I think it's good they're leaving him in here for Gallo. Yeah, even if he hits one 900 feet, it's still a one run lead. Face it into center field. Now we'll see what Ned does with the potential tying run coming up. He is at the steps. He is coming up the steps. He is past the steps. And soon will be at the mound. So a Chevy call to the bullpen. Kelvin Herrera will come in, but not before this sellout crowd at Kauffman Stadium will show its collective appreciation for Jeremy Guthrie. Denny, will he tip his cap to the crowd? Do you think he will when he walks off? And do you think that's proper when a guy does that? Yeah, I think it's good. It just, yeah, I think he will, and I think he should, and I think he would, and I think he could, and maybe he will. Come on. Come on, Jay Guts. Come on. Come on. There you yeah. go. There you go. There's a pro. <laughs> Told you. Thank you, Denny. Following a couple of one out hits. Let's look back at some of his sprint cuts of the game. There were some cuts, but they didn't have much fortune. That nice double play there, that helped Guthrie out one inning. Using all four areas of the strike zone and trying to stay out of the middle is the key every night. Doesn't always work. But Guthrie kept the ball in the yard, Denny. Yes, he did. And 
he spent quite a few pitches in the first inning. However, he rallied from that and really was able to use an economy of pitches from that point. So at the moment, his line is no runs in six and a third. He is still responsible for Moreland at second base and Gallo at first. So Herrera's job today is to get two outs. But he doesn't get a clean inning and he inherits two runners and that foul ball got home plate umpire Jim Reynolds. Ooh, right, right there on the bicep. You get a lot of swing and misses just ticking the ball when Herrera's in there because he's throwing 98 to 100 miles an hour and guys are just going to barely get a piece of it and and it's too bad for Salvi or the umpire that usually catches him. Yeah, it's just a redirect. It's getting hit by a pinch. Andrews has grounded out twice, once into a double play, and there's a line drive up the left field line. Foul. Ooh, and halfway down the line, Andrews showing some disgust as he that ball just went foul. That would have plated both of those runners. You know, the way things have been going for the Royals, I don't know about you guys, but I'm just looking for signs that it's going to turn. Escobar in the fifth inning had that little swinging bunt, and the Royals turned that into a run, and there Andrews hits a shot, and he just pulls it foul instead of hitting it up the line and scoring perhaps a couple of runs. Mm -hmm. Texas not playing ground balls very well in this game. Mm -hmm. Little things. Still 0 and 2 on Andrews. Kelvin pitched yesterday and turned in a 1 2 3 eighth inning. Whoa. Right where Kelvin and Perez wanted it. I mean, that is a bullseye on the target. But if you're following the grid, it was outside. Fastball changeup. Changeups at 88 to 89. Facing Herrera, you know what's coming, that hard fastball. So guys are kind of gearing up to swing early. He's got an occasional slider he'll throw. Two and two. You guys think that older hitters, let's say really good hitters, but in their mid 30s, later on into their later 30s, are more vulnerable to change ups because, especially a hard thrower, they have to cheat or start their swing a little quicker? Yeah, I think that's a, a, a real good possibility because playing in my 30s, 38 years old, I could, I could hit that. Hard fastball in the upper 90s. I still could get to it, but I had to cheat. I had to get going sooner. And then, then he pulls the string on you, and you're done. So I agree with that. I've always heard that the key to that is if you keep your hands back, everything else can come forward. But if you keep your hands back, you still have the opportunity to make decent contact. Mm -hmm. you're, you're correct. Base hit right field. Moreland did not get a good read at all. He was running back to second base, so he'll only go to third, and now they're loaded with one out. Andrus had an excellent at bat there. He fouled off a lot of tough pitches by Herrera, and he wasn't given in one bit. Just almost missed that double there down the line, but he stayed with that fastball away there and just went with it. 
Moreland thought maybe somebody was going to catch on the fly. He didn't want to get doubled up. See how he's going back. Now let's check our theory about little things beginning to go in favor of the Royals. If they get out of this jam, bases loaded, one out, I think we're onto something. <laughs> That's really going out on a limb there. Yeah. <laughs> you and I have had this discussion. The Royals over the latter part of last season and into this season have done a remarkable job of avoiding the big inning. Maybe mm -hmm. in a situation like this, you give up one instead of five. Oh, and two. Sometimes you give up none instead of one and that's happened quite a bit mm -hmm. and that's when you're really going well that's when that's the pitching and defense working in tandem of course but the, where the Royals have really done a great job of that over the end of last season and this year. You, we talk a lot about hitters with runners in scoring position Royals pitching has been very good mm -hmm. with runners in scoring position exceptional. I was asking Dave Island about that earlier this year if there was a reason behind it. And he said well first of all you have talent. He says second of all when they do their work when Dave Island has a pitcher working on the side they do a lot of work pitching out of the stretch because that's when you're going to have to make your biggest pitches. Mm -hmm. And he's talking about not just relievers but. You know particularly the starters. And sometimes. Well, I think more times than not actually when you watch a starter warm up in between innings of his eight pitches he might throw six out of the windup and then maybe a couple of half hearted ones out of the stretch. Well one pitch into the inning base hit now he's out of the stretch the rest of the game. But Dave Island really emphasis doing a lot of work. Pitching out of the stretch makes a lot of sense. There's a base hit into right field one run will score. Gallo is coming around third and he will score and it's a one run game. With the tying run at third base. Leonis Martin down in the count. Drives in Moreland and Gallo. So two hitters and both have had some pretty good swings. Yep it's just right down the middle. And up. Hot as this Rangers team is, I knew three runs may not be enough. And they're held holding tight. And a good day to hit. Perfect day. Warm weather, temperature hovering around 90, wind. So that kind of underlines what a good job Guthrie did. Those two runs are charged to him. And now his line is complete. Two runs, three hits, and six and a third innings. And now all of this is the responsibility of Herrera. Andrews at third, Martin at first, only one out to Robinson Chirinos. And that was not a suicide squeeze. Andrews was not coming down from third on the pitch. You could tell he was making an effort to push that ball to first base. Remember Ross another catcher tried to do that a few games ago missed twice he tried to do it twice mm -hmm. couldn't get the job done. That was the uh, Sunday game in Chicago right. Yep. Chirinos is 0 for 2 those at bats against Guthrie. One and one. Guthrie got the first out against the first hitter. He got Fielder to ground out to Moustakis. But then Moreland singled. Gallo singled, bring the tying run to the plate. And then Ned Yost brought in Kelvin Herrera. And now he can hope for a strikeout. One and two on Chirinos. And the rookie Hanser Alberto is on deck.
suddenly very quiet at Kauffman Stadium. Two and two. Big crowds all three days. Texas won game one for nothing. They won yesterday. 4-2. And now the Royals with a 3-0 lead coming into this inning. And the Rangers have scored two, and they have the tying run at third with one out. Runner goes from first. And it's still 2-2 two and two on Chirinos. 2-2. Two two. He probably will stay with that fastball. Denny, what do you think? If you throw him a change up here and it's not over the plate, sometimes that speeds the hitter's bat. Yeah, exactly. Why? Right. Why speed the bat up? No. Just challenge him with your best pitch. That's right. Put it in a decent spot and you get the second out. And the guy's still at third. That's the key. That's right. Strand him. All on the edge of our seats, waiting to see what the sign is going to be here. Sal's just waiting for Herrera to get set. And he called for a changeup. Runner goes again, and it's chopped to short. This is going to tie the game. And that snaps a scoreless streak of 16 and two-thirds innings by the Royals' bullpen. And the Texas Rangers have tied the game at three in the seventh inning. And now they have the go-ahead run at second base. Got to go for the strike out there. I'm sorry. Man, a changeup is a pitch that, that if it's thrown, it's out over, and you're used to a guy throwing a hundred, you're geared for the hundred. You can put the bat on it if you keep your hands back. We just got through talking about that a couple of hitters ago. I'm with you. I I was a little surprised. Put that fastball in a good spot. You're still leading by one. Hanser Alberto has popped out and flied out 0 for 2. Now to Infante Hosmer hustles back to the bag and the Royals put an end to a three run top of the seventh inning stretch time at Coffin Stadium. It's a brand new game. We're all even at three. Panera takes us around the American League. Minnesota right now leading 2-0. They've been struggling a little bit. Detroit 5-4 over Chicago. Samarja uh, giving up a bunch of runs in that one. Baltimore all over Cleveland, St. Louis, and Los Angeles tonight. Our Mazda game break takes us to Target Field and Eduardo Escobar.
put the shot down the line. And so Minnesota behind Mike Pelfrey on the mound and knocking in that run right there has the lead. Ned Yost saying today, guys, that we're not losing ground, but we're losing opportunity. Yes. The rest of the division has definitely helped them out during this rough stretch, and the Royals certainly will have a chance to do something or have their say up in Minnesota the next few here at Kauffman Stadium. It's the folks in purple having their say today. K-State Day as we welcome 3,500 K-State fans attending and wearing their purple. And of course, we will see KU Day later in the year, MU Day, and uh, always fun to have all those college days out here at the ballpark. And most importantly, guys, they're looking for that W. And Ryan and I are looking for Illinois Westland and Minnesota Day at the ballpark. I, I, I haven't seen one no, yet. No, I've gone over the schedule a few times and I can't seem to find it. Uh, me either. It's, it's discouraging. I'm a little down. I know you are. I can tell by the look on your face. Well, you've got 30 years on me here. I mean, you, you've got enough juice to pull that off, don't you? Yeah. Or is Illinois Westland just a little too far from here? Yeah, that's probably the answer. Yeah. <laughs> well, when the Royals are right when they're at their best this is when they score right after the opponent seems to take some momentum from them Gerard Dyson will lead off he will show bunt and take low and after Dyson bats the Royals will begin their fourth time against Kobe Lewis and depending on what happens the Rangers are working in their bullpen. It's been Dentweiler, the lefty. Eighty-five pitches, so he's in good shape in that department. Detweiler, the lefty. So I guess the assumption would be that Lewis will at least see Dyson. And Escobar, then Mustakas Hosmer after that, left hand hitters. Bunted in the air and foul. It's good to see Gerard Dyson getting some success out there, hitting the ball to the opposite field, you know, getting on base, using the speed. You got to have him here, this inning here. Let's see, 2 2 count. In the air to right field. And Chu makes a two hand grab. So on to Minneapolis after the conclusion of today's game and boy there's a lot left in the season and you don't want to make a premature judgment but Paul Molitor sure looked like he had his hands full after the Royals played the home opener in Minnesota. Minnesota has gone 26 and 14 since the Royals last saw them. Phil Hughes and Jason Vargas tomorrow and Joel just told us that Minnesota is leading so the Royals even though it's just the one third mark of the season for them don't want to go down two games behind Minnesota and they've had their share of injuries the Minnesota Twins have and yet they're just rolling along yeah they're in a hot streak right now but it seems to me two things number one they're probably at this point given their roster overachieving a little bit and there's also quite a few younger players that are working into the mix that are still learning how to win and so that takes time as we know here so I've got a feeling there's two or three teams the Cubs come to mind Minnesota comes to mind Houston comes to mind that are probably right about where the Royals were two years ago. What do you think? Hmm. Sounds right. Escobar down on strikes, two down in the seventh inning. Fastball just out of the strike zone. Looks good to hit, but hard to square. 
it just seems to me lately, and not just Escobar, but other Royals too, but since we just saw Escobar, that it's just a little extra muscling up on a pitch like that instead of, you know, getting on top of it and trying to shoot it out to right center field. Yeah, you know, and it's like what Denny says uh, today about today, hitting is perfect in warm, humid weather, especially with the wind blowing out. And Esc Escobar having hit a few couple homers already this year, we've seen it take it. That's a gapper. Chu is back. He has a very strong arm. And Moustakis slides in with a double, his second hit of the game. And you know, sometimes we've seen Escobar get taken out of his game when he hits a few homers. Now he thinks he swings for the fences. You know, it just that happens sometimes. You have to shorten up that stroke a little. But this one here is perfect. You think there's any regret in the Texas dugout that they didn't take Colby Lewis out after the strike out of Escobar? Or was that fool's goal? Well, Mike Maddox. The Rangers pitching coach, not Jeff Bannister, their manager, is out there. So if they regret not bringing in Detweiler before Moustakis, they're going to leave Lewis in there for another left hand batter, Eric Hosmer. And you know, this could be a way for Bannister to instill confidence in his veteran pitcher, saying, hey, look, it's your game. Go ahead and finish it up. It's, it's could be ill advised, though, you think, Denny? Yes. <laughs> Short answer to a long question. Yeah. yeah. If he gets away with this, why well, good for him, but I have my doubts. I have confidence in Hosmer right now. All right. But there's two outs. And he's got one to go, and I think he's going to go ahead and see if Lewis can get out of it. Unless they walk Hosmer, and that's what they're going to do. So it'll be Lewis and Kendry's Morales. Now the Rangers could still make a move as Kendry's has the majority of his power from the left side of the plate. And then another left hand batter coming up after him and Alex Gordon. But no sign of Jeff Bannister so it'll be Lewis. And Kendry's Morales. He turned in our Chrysler drive of the game last time up in the fifth inning. Sure did. Opposite field pop. That ball was pushed over towards the left field side. Martin couldn't get it. But Morales drove him in a run. Royals well, so far today are 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position. You guys have a lot more confidence in Colby Lewis than I do as far as him working out of this. I do. <laughs> well I don't know. I, <laughs> Obviously Bannister does his, yeah. own, his own skipper. I'm wondering. Myself it's interesting. Kendry's today one for three with that RBI double. He's ahead in the count 2 and 0 oh, and he is now 4 out of 16 against Colby Lewis with 3 doubles. He has hit 100 pitches Colby Lewis. Change up line to right field and Chu is there. <laughs> can't yep. hit it any harder. You can't. Thank you Denny. Enjoy the guys as always. Go get us a win over on radio, would you? I'll do my best.
Davis in the Cleveland series allowed a run for the first time this year. Shame on him. It was a 22 inning scoreless streak the longest in the major leagues. Today's copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Kansas City Royals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Kansas City Royals Baseball Corporation. Ryan Lefevre with Rex Hudler and Joel Goldberg with producer Joe Lavero, director Steve Kurtenbach, associate producers Al Broughton, Sam Abramson, Dave Holtzman, and the producer of Royals Live is Brian Shapiro. So here we go, eighth inning. Texas got all of their runs in the seventh. Top of the order and Delino to Shields takes ball one. He's a tough luck 0 for 3. He is lined out to center and lined out to right. And two of his at bats. Good breaking ball to make it one ball, one strike. Yep, Davis has got a power fastball at 97. Overhand curve you just saw in it. Some cut fastballs around 93, maybe 94. One and two. And they needed that run that last inning. If Morales could just get on top of that ball would have sunk down in there and they would have scored him a run. But now they're going to have to just keep battling. And to call that a swing, it was home plate umpire Jim Reynolds. And a good start for Davis. Yeah, yes, he did. He attempted the swing. He's got to go. So Delino DeShields, who drove the Royals nuts when they were in Arlington a few weeks ago, he is one for 12 in this series. Jin Su Chu goes the other way, and Alex comes up to make the play. You know, Chu is 0 for 4. While we have a moment, I want to wish a happy birthday to a very special Royals fan, Joyce Althaus, 83 years old today. Her son, Bill, is at Kauffman Stadium often, a writer for the Independence Examiner. Wanted to make sure he pass along his birthday wishes to his mom who was an original season ticket holder back in 1969 and Bill was telling me that he and his mom were at the Royals first game back in 1969 so happy birthday Joyce that's right thank you Ryan no way to pick her up Right center field. And a dive by Dyson, but he came up a couple of feet short, and Prince Fielder is into second base with a two out double. Hard to keep this guy down. Hits the ball to all fields. This one here, he's able to get his hands out on the outside fastball though and he pulled it in the gap nice nice try he he wanted to make that catch in the worst way but some balls you just can't get to well placed and now a guy who's been a tough out against the Royals all year Mitch Moreland Down and in, ball one. He has two hits today. He scored one of the three runs last inning. He homered to the opposite field in the game on Friday. And Mitch Moreland, in case you're wondering, is two for eight against Wade Davis. All to strike, one and one. Whoa. Mm, 
Where did that miss? That's a, that's that's over the plate. Wow. This is, this is one of their hottest hitters. More than six for ten in the series. You can't give him that. Same spot. Well, maybe it has something to do with two pitches before that, which appeared to be out of the strike zone, but called a strike. So now three and one to Moreland. Breaking ball out to Hosmer. Underhands to Davis, and it's a scoreless inning for Wade Davis. To the bottom of the eighth inning. Alex Gordon, Alex Rios, and Salvador Perez coming up. Time to get her done. Joel will be up there going over highlights of the game after we hope an on field interview reaction from the Royals clubhouse including Royals manager Ned Yost and then setting up an eight game road trip which begins tomorrow in Minnesota three against the twins three against St. Louis and then two against Milwaukee and then the Royals will come home in the next hand homestand and continue that series with Milwaukee. Keone Kella. Is out of the Rangers bullpen. He's made 26 appearances and has allowed runs in just five of those 26 appearances. Fastball with movement is in for a strike to Alex Gordon. Low to mid 90s with that fastball. It's got a nice curveball. He'll mix in with a changeup. Royals got to run off him in Texas. See if they can get one here. Ninety six. One and one Alex was hit by a pitch in the first inning. And since then he is 0 for 2. Kella has allowed one home run in 24 and two thirds innings. Shallow left. Andrews is out to make the play one down. Surprised we haven't seen any home runs yet today. I mean I thought today before the game I told Holtzy we're going to see five six home runs between both these teams today. You just never know in baseball. Wind blowing out. Good hitting day. Alex Rios doubled in the fourth inning. Start looking back now. 
since Texas has tied the game in the seventh inning. It's easy to in hindsight go back and look at opportunities that the Royals didn't cash in. And Rios in the fourth inning led off with a double. And in the first two innings today the Royals were looking like themselves moving runners good situational hitting 0 oh and 2 on Rios but they didn't get Rios home in that inning and then in the fifth inning Kendry's Morales hit a two out RBI double to put the Royals in front three nothing and he was at second base with two down and Royals were poised to make that a a more damaging inning to Colby Lewis but he got Alex Gordon on a pop out to short and then after the intentional walk to Eric Hosmer last inning Kendry's Morales now that's just bad luck as Kendry's hit it right on the nose and lined out to chew in right field. Yeah, I wouldn't you know it. Fastball got him looking two down. Rios has a little chat with Jim Reynolds before he hits the road. That wasn't a strike to Davis when Wade Davis two in a row he put him right there in the same spot. So maybe he's got a beef. Well Salvi homered late yesterday. And there are times when it feels like he is determined he is going to swing at the pitch before it's even thrown. And that was one of them right there. Yep, guessing first pitch fastball all the way. Oh, and two. A couple of curves in a row, and he might get another one. Got it a good fastball. He could try to get him upstairs out of the hitting zone. Climb the ladder on him. Oh, he went with a breaking ball outside. Salvi can hurt you on that pitch. Uh, the one away more than he can on that high fastball. He's more of a good, better low ball hitter. In my opinion. Left field corner, deep gone! <laughs> that gets everybody out of their seats. They've been waiting all day. They've been waiting all homestand. Salvador Perez continues to have a flair for the dramatic. And the Royals lead 4-3 in the eighth inning. How about that high ball? This is definitely a, a Miller Lite moment. Well, it wasn't exactly a high ball, but he tried to sneak a piece of cheese by a hungry Salvi, and it wasn't happening. Pulled his hands in and busted it. Home run just in the nick of time. And now Omar Infante grounds out. They are chanting his name. He's got to put the gear on and get ready for Greg Holland and close out this game and hit the road.
would qualify for Salvador Perez biggest fan as he homers in the later innings for a second straight game. Today's much bigger and it's just the second time that Keone Kella of the Rangers had allowed a home run in almost 26 innings. Salvi, he's just full of energy. Look at the curtain call. He couldn't wait. Look at the, look at the passion. Look at that energy this guy has. He he loves the people. He loves baseball. What a fit. What a perfect fit for Salvi and the Kansas City Royals. Now Greg Holland with Joey Gallo at the plate. Good fastball to knees for strike one. Eight out of nine and save opportunities. I saw Greg Holland getting ready two innings ago out there in that bullpen. He was stretching. He's still, you know, using his rubber band, getting his arm ready to go off of this moment here. Fastball slider. Jeremy Guthrie went six and a third innings. He was charged with two runs. They both scored after he was out. Herrera gave up a run in two thirds and Wade Davis pitched a scoreless inning and now two and one on Gallo. He was part of the Rangers three run seventh inning. The Royals got one in the first one in the second one in the fifth and then the Rangers bunched together their three runs in the seventh. Two and two. Sliders as good as there is out there. It's got a, a straight down drop to it. Tough. Any part of the plate. Inside or the outside. Keep it out of the middle. If it comes down. Alcides Escobar wants it. One down. Willie Wildcat on K State Day. That is K State soccer coach Mike Dabini. 3,500 K State fans getting that special purple and silver Royals themed hat. And hoping and helping cheer the Royals on to victory. Elvis Andrews. Left field and that's in the corner. Alex just enough room to make the play man Ooh. that take your breath away. My goodness it sure did. That's where the wind is blowing. From the right field foul pole to the left field foul pole. It didn't sound like he got it but you hit it high enough and the wind grabs it and you never know in fact. Greg Holland almost refused to look after he made that pitch. He just continued to stare into Salvi, Salvador Perez, hoping that Salvador's body language would tell him that it was going to stay in. Now, one more to go. Royals could badly use a W, especially heading to Minnesota, where the Twins are a game ahead of them. And it's 0 1 on Martin. Tenth sellout of the year here today. 38,202. And a lot more to cheer about today than the first two games of the series. And now it's 0 and 2 on Martin. He had the biggest hit in the Rangers' three run seventh, the two run single. His only hit today. Struck him out. Salvador Perez there to receive the final pitch of the game, and he had the biggest hit of the game. Royals avoid the sweep. It's a two and four homestand. But a good feeling as the Royals move on to face 
first place Minnesota. A KCW, not just for the Royals, but it's a big W for Royals manager Ned Yost. Ned Yost has now won 404 games as a Royals manager. There he is right in the middle of the high fives. That ties him with Dick Hauser for second on the all-time Royals list. And now just six wins shy of Whitey Herzog. And he has presented the game ball. Wow, congratulations, Ned. Holland. Hammer time. And that's the hammer right there underneath the bat. Nice W. Well, I'm sure you know who's going to be with Joel. The question is, Joel, who's going to dunk Salvi? Well, no one's on the Gatorade bucket right now, but the crowd is chanting Salvi, Salvi. They love it. They love you here, Salvi. What do you think? Thank you, thank you. I love you guys. I love you. <laughs> okay, so the home run. Take me through that. What are you looking for? Second straight day that you hit a home run late in the game. Tell us about it. I never fade that guy. I just tried to jump in the first piece five he told me breaking boy. And after that, you're looking for a good piece and try to do it my job. How about the energy right when that happened from your team and this stadium? It's unbelievable. Thank you for coming. Thank you for the support, fan. Huh? How big was this for your team, too? Here it comes. Did they miss? No, they got me a little bit in my back. It's about time. Nobody can take my job, man. Nobody can take my job. How important was this for you? It's been a rough stretch for a couple of weeks, and how have you been able to get through it? That's gonna happen, you know, the situation we got right now, that's gonna happen to everybody, bro. The good thing for all, we like to fight, we like to compete, and doing the best we can do to win the game. Last thing, you go up to Minnesota, they are in first place. What do you think about that series? We go doing the best job we can do, and try to win the series for this fan. All right, there it is, Salvador Perez, everybody. Thank you, Papa. There you hear it. Thank you, Papa, and 38,000 give him another round of Salvi chance. Well, he has provided some of the most exciting moments for the Royals the last two years. And I tell you what, that was not an easy pitch at all. Down and in, just enough to get it into the Royals' bullpen. And they're celebrating out there in the dugout and in a packed Coffin Stadium. Royals win it 4-3. We'll be right back.